Happy Monday, everyone. I have an incredible news story for you. And this one is a piece of military history that involves so many miracles that will leave you in awe. I'm talking about the Six Day War in Israel, which is considered by many a string of miracles. In fact, there are many documentaries that you can check on your own where soldiers from both sides uh, came forth with uh, accounts of divine intervention that they could not explain. So I hope that you enjoy this incredible piece of history and proof of the hand and the protection of God. Hope you enjoyed the story. On May 15, 1967, on Israel's Independence Day, a three-week period began, which was one of the most intense and fearful periods in Israeli history. In direct contravention of international agreements, Egyptian leader Jamal Abel Nasser removed the UN peacekeeping forces and began moving tens of thousands of soldiers and hundreds of tanks into what was the demilitarized Sinai Peninsula towards Israel's southern border. Israel turned to the nations of the world, specifically the United States, for assistance against Egyptian aggression but all Western countries decided to remain neutral. Israel, with 2.5 million Jews, was left alone to face the mighty of the Arab nations. At first, I was upset when I saw this and I read this, because I thought it was so unfair that Israel was left alone to fend for themselves and all the countries gave their back. But everything happens for a reason. And the reason why all these countries would turn their back on Israel is because Israel was going to be held by something far greater than any army in the world, by that divine hand of what can only be explained, as you will hear, it's by, I guess, can only be explained by the hand of God, source, universe, whatever you want to call it. But I'm getting myself ahead of the story. The people of Israel were preparing for war as they were about to be attacked by four powerful armies within the region at the time, Iraq, Syria, Egypt, and Jordan. All of these countries had a lot more soldiers, more tanks, more firepower and experience than the Israelis. The Israelis were heavily outnumbered and outgunned by the Arab nations who had over half a million troops, almost a thousand combat aircrafts, and over 2,500 tanks, compared to Israel's army, which consisted of 300 aircrafts, 800 tanks, and a quarter million troops. Nobody thought that Israel would be able to survive this attack. In fact, Israel was expected to go through a second Holocaust, and casualties were, ex uh, were expected to be 20, to 100,000. Massive graveyards were being prepared in Jerusalem and parks in Tel Aviv to accommodate for the victims, but this wasn't the case. Casualties for the Arab nations were very heavy and extreme for such a short period of time uh, compared to, to Israel. Over 20,000 Arab soldiers were killed compared to only to less than a thousand in, uh, Israeli soldiers. What is most incredible is how this tiny giant who was expected to perish won the war in six days. This defies logic, and many consider this to be a miracle as there has never been a victory like this in modern history. Many attribute the victory to Israel's impeccable preparation and ruthless practice, but others attribute it to divine intervention from above. On June 5, 1967, the Israeli Defense Forces dispatched almost all of the Israeli Air Force. In a, in a daring mission, only 12 planes were left behind. The fighter pilots flew to an unprecedented low altitude of less than 20 meters above the ground. Egypt had the most advanced ground missile defense system in the Middle East, whereas most of the Israeli jets were old and outdated French planes. If the Israeli jets had been detected, many would have been taken down and Israel would have been technically left with no air force. 
And then the first miracle occurred. Unbeknownst to Israel's army, the most advanced Russian midjets that patrolled the air the airspace along the borders between Egypt and Israel were, for that one critical hour, grounded. I say divine timing. Incredibly, at the very same time, the top commanders of Egypt, Jordan, and Iraq flew together to observe the Egyptian forces invading Sinai. The Egyptian officers were ordered that all anti-aircraft units not to fire unless given a direct order as long as they were in flight. This created a total confusion on the Egyptian ground as Israel struck exactly in that window of time. In a matter of minutes, this resulted in the Israeli Air Force reaching all of the Egyptian airfields without even one plane being detected. That's a miracle. More than 200 Egyptian planes, almost half of Egypt's fleet, were almost instantaneously destroyed, also bombing the runways and making impotent the mightiest army in the Middle East. General Monty Hawk, commander of the Air Force, said, In my wildest dreams, I never would have perceived such an incredible success. And here is another miracle. Egypt was only able to hit one Israeli plane. Israeli Air Force went, went on to destroy a total of more than 300 Egyptian planes and every airfield was neutralized. The timing was seemingly orchestrated to position Israeli jets exactly where they should be. And not in six days, but in six hours, the war was won. It was nothing more than a military miracle, seemingly impossible. What do you think? A stroke of good luck or a military miracle? And then another miracle. Not too, not too long after, soldiers from both sides have come forward claiming they had witnessed things that they could not be explained. One of such famous cases was when the IDF, the Israel Defense Force, went into the Golden Heights to fight the Syrian, the Syrian army. And one of the men from the IDF got run over by a tank and was seriously wounded. The Syrian soldiers saw this man was lying helpless on the battlefield and they began to run towards him, pointing their guns to shoot him. But all of a sudden, they just started to run away scared. The Israeli wounded soldier couldn't understand why. He was alone, he was wounded and unarmed. Why were these men running? When the Syrian commander asked his soldiers what had happened, the soldier start, stated, that they saw thousands of angels surrounding this man. Another case was reported of two Israeli soldiers who were on patrol when they saw at a distance an Egyptian half-track equipped with mount, with mount machine guns filled with soldiers heading towards them. The two Israeli soldiers had nowhere to hide, so they had no other option than to stand the ground and do the best they could. But, the, but these Egyptians never attacked and their half-track just stopped. The two Israeli soldiers approached the vehicle and they saw 18 men cowering in fear. And these men were begging for mercy and gave up. So the, Israeli, the two Israeli soldiers captured this man. When the men were later asked, why didn't they shoot? They replied that they were about to, but then they were struck by fear and their bodies froze. It was as if somehow they became paralyzed. They could hardly even hold their own weapons. What I found amazing about these stories is that the accounts are not coming from the Israeli side. They are coming from the opposition. So these are the men that are coming forward talking about these divine interventions. And you know, it doesn't make them look good, so they have no reason to lie. And that's what I find most amazing. Another miracle. One Israeli soldier took an entire Egyptian patrol by himself. Later, when the patrol was asked by the Egyptian commander why they gave themselves, get themselves up to one soldier, the officers replied, one soldier? No, there were thousands of them. When they crossed into the Israeli territory, these beings just disappeared. The Israeli soldier, who is now a hero, said that he could not make any sense of it because he thought he was going to die, but instead, the Egyptian forces just turned themselves to him. 
In another case, a small Jewish community with no soldiers was under attack by Arab forces when all of a sudden they just ran away in great fear. Later, they stated that they were being attacked by huge strange beings with flaming swords. Another famous account by Colonel Yuri Benari, when the Israeli forces were heading into enemy territory and captured the West Bank town of, I guess it's pronounced Shikamons, while entering into what they thought was going to be a very hostile town, thousands of Arabs were cheering, clapping their hands, just smiling and approaching the Israeli forces. The Israelis were very confused, wondering why they were being so nice. Even the town guards were standing still. They didn't even fire a single bullet and the Israelis were easily able to take over this heavily armed area. And later, the Israelis found out that these civilians, these guards, these guards thought that they were the Iraqi forces who were due to arrive from the direction of Jordan. But by the time they realized their error, it was already too late. It was already too late because by that time, the Israeli forces had already taken control of the town. Then the greatest miracle of all, a miracle that Israel never expected, Jerusalem. Again, it seemed as though it was divine appointment in time. Israel took control of all their holy territories, the Sinai Peninsula, the Golan Heights, the West Bank, the Gaza Strip, and Jerusalem, which were which they had been awaiting for for 2,000 years. Journalists and generals throughout the world stated that no military logic or natural cause could explain this victory, and many saw it as nothing short of a miracle. I just love this amazing story because the enemies of Israel had twice as many soldiers three times as many planes, four times as many tanks. I mean, the odds were stuck against them in every military front. So could it be that the love of these people for their land, their self-sacrifice, the courage of the Israeli soldiers combined with divine guidance and protection was what made all these miracles possible? You don't have to believe in God you don't, whether you believe in miracles or not, I think that we can at least agree that something unexplained was at work here. And whatever that was, it seemed to be on the side of the Jewish people. How was it that a country so tiny was able to win the war against powerful enemies in only six days? That is nothing short of a miracle. In fact, according to biblical prophecies, the Jews were who were removed from the land of Israel for two millenniums were supposed to inhibit Jerusalem again. The scriptures where this prophecy was written was 2,500 years ago. Isn't that amazing? So you tell me, luck or divine appointment? You be the judge. I hope that you have enjoyed this story. Please remember to subscribe to my storytelling channel and help me grow, and I will see you next Monday with another wonderful story. In the meantime, stay grateful, stay safe, and remember, there are miracles happening everywhere, if you care to believe. See you next week.